However, a hundred years after Grant's death, in the middle of the afternoon, something else happened, which changed how the people of Arryn saw Grant even more. A series of earth tremors were felt north of town where Grant had been buried, and then he reappeared and attacked with abandon, mocking the people of Arryn for their weakness. He came back to life? Don asked, captivated by the story. I mean, I thought you said he was dead. He really came back? I suppose so, Sylvia replied, however, with a brief shrug. According to the records from those times, Grant had become a different kind of creature entirely, one that only cared about fighting. Whenever he spoke, the only things he said were taunts against the people he was fighting for their lack of strength or skill, as if he really wanted someone to overpower him. Of course, with the inhuman strength that he gained from his transformation, and his own natural skill, no single warrior could hope to defeat him. Since then, Grant has reappeared every century on the same day, and the exact same time, and the result is always the same. He attacks with abandon, and the people of Arryn have to defend themselves by fighting him as a unified force. Still, there are always heavy losses, and a lot of rebuilding has to be done afterwards. This time, though, I'm afraid he might destroy us all, because our people won't be able to fight him together. Sometimes, I get the feeling that we're already on the verge of destroying one another, even without Grant's help. I don't think that Arryn is going to survive his next attack. I think that Grant will take advantage of our weakness and pick us off. At that point, however, Sylvia looked directly at Don for the first time since she'd started to tell her story, although he sort of had an easy time anticipating what she was going to say next. Tonight at 8 o'clock, it'll have been exactly 100 years since the last time Grant was killed. And if you're still here, he'll kill you too. That's why I told you to leave town quickly. If you go to Gellum, and Grant heads in that direction once he's finished with us, you might have the time you need to warn the knights about him. However, Don just didn't feel right about that idea. He knew that he had to ask a couple of additional questions, too. If you knew exactly when Grant was going to show up, you should have just called the knights, Don insisted, but Sylvia was starting to look stern the moment that he suggested that. You don't know what a ferocious enemy Grant is. Even the knights wouldn't be able to kill him without heavy losses. And besides, Grant was a warrior of Arryn, so it's our job to settle this. If we started asking Gellum for help with Grant, then they might start asking questions about where he came from, and if that happened, the memory of our city would be tainted by Grant's betrayal. The people of Arryn wouldn't want that to happen. Dealing with Grant was the reason that Arryn became a city of fighters, and if we can't defeat him on our own, then what would our training be for? Sometimes people need help, Don suggested with a shrug. There's no shame in that. However, Sylvia just shook her head sadly at that point. Our people wouldn't see it that way. Your people made a lot of mistakes, Don replied, however, hoping that he had all the information he needed about the situation, because like Grant, he'd been raised on the values of honesty, judgment, charity, and self-discipline, and he knew that he needed to make a decent judgment at that point. Finally, after thinking it over for a few minutes, Don spoke, feeling absolutely miserable about what he had to say. I don't see how I can leave town. What? Sylvia asked, slowly scrambling to her feet. Are you crazy? Don't you know how dangerous- Look, Don interrupted her, speaking with all the will he'd once used to argue with his father and his best friend back in Troma. I came here because I wanted to learn how to fight, become a warrior, and get one step closer to being a knight. But obviously that was a mistake. There aren't any warriors here. What did you just say? Sylvia asked, looking deeply offended and raising her hands as if intending to lash out and prove Don wrong, but Don refused to give in to fear by that point, because there were more important things he knew than how he felt. A warrior has to be a strong human first, Don said, reciting the moral lessons he'd learned in trauma. They have to follow the lessons of righteousness and work for the good of their people, otherwise they're just sabotaging themselves and everyone they know. The people of Arryn have all forgotten the seventh dictate of righteousness. However, the moment that Don said that, Sylvia started to lower her arms in what looked like shame. Soon, she'd slumped back down in her chair, and after only a moment, she muttered meekly, We haven't forgotten. At least I haven't. Can you recite it for me, then? Don asked, a challenging, antagonistic edge in his voice by that point. Soon, though, Sylvia was indeed reciting Dictate 7. The evil of magic pervades the land and causes discord. Its might is terrifying. There is no room for competition or argument. If someone is not an ally, then they are a foe, because if they insist on competition and argument, they will only cause further discord and weaken the defense of their people. Don was still frowning when Sylvia finished reciting those words, because he knew that he had to be even more confrontational in order to get his point across. The fifty basic tenets only exist to help teach us how to get along with each other and what to value, but disobeying one of the twelve primary dictates is a serious crime. In Troma, the law was that anyone who broke one of those dictates would be suspect to promotional banishment. You mean subject to provisional banishment. Sylvia corrected him for a moment, though it didn't make her look any more confident. In fact, she seemed a lot more worried with every second that passed. Right. 
Don replied, however, not looking the least bit ashamed of his momentary slip-up. That means people who'd rather hurt one another have to leave town until they shape up. I know what it means, Sylvia replied, looking at Don a bit darkly, though she didn't seem eager to do anything about it, so Don spoke again, hoping that he might be able to provoke Sylvia to action. The law says that Antoine and Harold should have been banished years ago, and they should definitely be banished now. You know we can't do that, Don, Sylvia replied, however, shaking her head sadly. Grant attacks tonight, and those two are the best fighters in town. If we try to banish them, we'll be throwing away our strength. I thought you said they were only making Aaron weaker, Don replied. You said it, and the true way says it, but you don't really see it that way, do you? Well... Sylvia stammered as though trying to explain her actions somehow, but by that point it was clear that she was much too close to both of them, and her reasons for not wanting them to be banished had always been much more personal than tactical. Once Don realized that, he knew that he couldn't count on Sylvia to be a hero, or to stand up for Aaron's soul. That was when Don decided to leave that tiny house, feeling very sure of what he had to do next. As soon as he stood up to leave, though, Sylvia asked him another question. You're really not leaving, Aaron, are you? No, Don replied, however. I'll send them a message warning them that they might have to fight Grant pretty soon, but I'm not leaving. Aaron needs all the help it can get right now. Are you crazy? Sylvia demanded to know. How much help could you possibly be? You don't even have any formal combat training. No, Don replied, finally starting to look very frustrated. But I have skills of my own, and I have my priorities straight. I think I might be the closest thing to a warrior that Aaron has right now, and if Aaron won't force people out who trample all over her laws, she won't force me out either. Then, without another word, Don left that tiny house and headed to the north, where the troops of Aaron were already beginning to gather.